In this video, I want to talk about how we can improve upon the code that we wrote last time, make it more um, legible, uh, simple, simpler, and easier to write and read. Um, and the idea is we're going to um, solve a system of equations using the fourth order rank cut method. In this example, I'm solving the predator-prey equations, so they're given up here. Um, it's a coupled system of, of ordinary differential equations. Um, if we, you could also use this type of approach if you have a higher order differential equation that you, re you reduce down to a system of first order equations. You would get to something that looks very similar. Um, so in this code, I clear the, the command window and the um, workspace, define some constants, um, define function handles, init uh, create initial conditions, my step size, and here's my fourth order running cut a loop that updates each equation for the rabbits and the foxes um, in a coupled fashion. Now, what I want to do here is instead of keeping R and F separate, I'm going to define them as just my unknown variables Y. So these are my dependent variables, and Y is going to be a is going to include R and F. So therefore, anywhere I call Y of one, I'm really saying that's R, and anywhere I say Y of two, that's going to be F. And I'm gonna, and Y will end up being a large matrix of both the R's and the F's. So we could write the first uh, row is the R's and the second row is the um, F's and, and all the columns are gonna be the solution. So that's kind of the idea. Okay, so, and I just chose to put R first and then F second. You could do this the other way. The key is you have to know which one is, is which. So then my, I'm gonna write a function handle that's going to return the slopes for both r and f. This is going to be a function of t and y, and it's going to return two slopes. It's going to return the slope for r, which is given as a times r. Now r is y1 minus b times r, which is y1 times f, which is y2. And then my equation for the foxes, the slope for the foxes is minus L times F, which is Y2, plus K times uh, Y1, which is the rabbits, times Y2, which is the foxes. And that will return the two slopes for the rabbits and the foxes, which I'm just storing as Y1 and Y2. Okay. My initial condition now, I have T of 1 is equal to 0, and I have Y of 1 is equal to what did I have? 20 and 5. So now I'm going to have both initial conditions into the first column in Y. So remember this is, I wrote that wrong. This is the first. So when, uh, when I have my first index, I'm going to set both rows, so R1 and R2, equal to 20 and 5. So there we go. Next, that's my initial condition. Step size, that's the same. Update is going to look a little bit different. So the update for y, which remember those are the rabbits and foxes. I'm going to have k1 to the f of t of i, comma y of i. So there you go. That's all we have to do. That passes the time and the both y's into this function. Time doesn't actually get used, but the y's get used like this. So, so that, that's um, how we can do K1. K2 is equal to F of T of I plus H over 2 and Y of I plus H over 2 times K1. So the by writing it like this, oops, the code, the Runge Kutta update ends up looking very similar for one equation or two equations. And K3 is going to be very similar to K2, so I'm just going to copy and paste K3, K4, and here we're going to have K2, K3, and H is, the last one doesn't have to divide by 2. So there we go. That's my full update, which looks exactly like what we had for one equation. The key thing is here, Y is now has two variables in it. Um, the slope, that f, returns two functions, and each of these k's is going to have two slopes as well. So that kind of does exactly what all of this code does, um, but makes it much more readable. And our, finally, our update, we're going to have y of i plus 1. 
but all values at i plus 1 is equal to y of all values at i. So this is both foxes and rabbits at i plus 1 is equal to y, the number of rabbits and foxes at i, plus h over 6 times k1 plus 2 times k2 plus 2 times k3 plus k4 is uh, my update. And that replaces all of this code. So then if I want to plot my solution, the number of rabbits is y1, the first entry in y, and all of the solutions. Okay? And y2 is the number of foxes at all uh, time locations. So let's run that and see uh, what happens. Index exceeds matrix dimensions. On what line? Line 32. Ah, so here where I just wrote y of i, I really want to pass both variables. So I need to pass both variables that exist in y. Ah, there we go. And there's my solution. It should be exactly the same solution as uh, what I had previously, um, but now I, my code, I would argue, is, is easier to read, um, which makes it easier to uh, write and debug.